We are thrilled to be talking today with author and investigative reporter Hank Philippi Ryan. Hank is the author of 12 novels. She writes two mystery series and has three standalone thrillers. Her latest, The First to Lie, just came out in August, and we talked about it on episode 113. Hank's literary awards include Five Agathas, Three Anthonys, Two McCavities, The Daphne, and a Mary Higgins Clark Award. And those aren't the only awards under Hank's belt. As an investigative TV reporter in Boston, Hank's work has earned her 14 Edmund R. Murrow Awards and 37 Emmy Awards. <laughs> we are all proud middle-aged women here. In fact, we were excited to learn that Hank didn't start writing novels until she was 55. And we're all also Midwest transplants to New England. I'm from Illinois, Emily's from Ohio, and Hank grew up in Indiana, where, we've heard, she often rode a pony to her local library. Welcome, Hank. Thank you. So nice to be with you all this morning. Yeah, we're so excited to have you here. And we were hoping we could start by you letting the listeners know a little bit about your two series and your standalones as well. It's, it's so much fun to hear you do that introduction, I have to tell you, because on bad writing days, you know, um, I think about those awards and I think, well, you know, sometimes it has worked. Um, <laughs> it's very reassuring to hear you do that intro. Thank you so much. It's really lovely. Um, you know, I, I did grow up and I grew up in really rural Indiana. So rural that you couldn't see another house from our house. And my sister and I did ride our ponies to the library to get books. We fill up the saddlebags with books and read up in the hayloft of the barn behind our house. Um, and that's where I fell in love with storytelling, you know, with Nancy Drew and Sherlock Holmes and Agatha Christie. So I always wanted to be uh, either a mystery author or a detective. I thought it might be cooler to be Sherlock Holmes than to write about Sherlock Holmes. So fast forwarding as exactly as you say, um, I, I became a reporter, but I never had a good idea for a, a novel until I was 55, which was 15 years ago. And I, and I came home and I said to my husband, I've got a great idea for a mystery. I'm going to write a mystery. And Jonathan says, that's great, honey. He said, do you know how to write a novel? And I'm like, how hard can that be? You know, I've read a million of them. So I soon learned how hard it could be, obviously. Um, but that turned into be, and this is the Hank long answer, forgive me. Um, that turned out to be Primetime, my first novel, which won the Agatha for Best First Mystery, which was glorious. And that is the first of my Charlotte McNally series. Charlotte McNally is a 46-year-old reporter in Boston who is a television reporter who's married to her job in television and wonders what happens when the camera doesn't love her anymore. So it's fun, fast paced, first person, sort of Nick and Nora Charles-esque, um, a little bit lighter um, humor. And there are four, she's an investigative reporter on the trail of a big investigative story, the one that she thinks she needs to save her career. And that's what the book is about. I really scraped the bottom for that character. <laughs> I have to go, right? So since I've been a television reporter for 43 years, and that has crossed my mind. Um, but then I had an idea, and there are four books in that series, Primetime, FaceTime, Airtime, Drive Time. I love them and would be happy to write more of those. But then I had a really good idea, forgive me, but it was a good idea for a different kind of novel. And for that, I needed a different kind of situation and a different kind of point of view, multiple points of view, it was a bigger kind of story. Um, and so I created the Jane Ryland thrillers. Jane Ryland is a, a younger investigative reporter in Boston who's just sort of starting her career. And her problem is that she's so honorable that she keeps getting fired because she won't do what management wants her to do. She um, she's very determined. So each of the of the books, beginning with the other woman, which is has been called um, the Good Wife Meets Law and Order. <laughs> each, of the, each of the Jane Ryland books um, has Jane Ryland, this reporter, on the trail of a big investigative story, and her secret love, Detective Jake Rogan, who's on the trail of a big murder mystery, and their two stories come together. And that's that's how every one of those books 
are. There are five in that series now and more under contract. So I loved writing those series. I learned a lot. You can really, it's fascinating to read them all. You don't have to read them in any order. I wrote them sort of as standalones. Um, but fascinating to see how, to me at least, how I have grown as an author um, as those books develop. I still love my first book. I, when I read it now, I think, oh, this is pretty good, uh, which is nice. Yeah. But I do see my development uh, as a writer uh, after these 15 years of writing. That's great. I so read the, Oh, sorry, Emily. I, I no, was going to say I read The Other Woman, and it was definitely a page turner. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. I was so proud of that book. You know, that was that was a you know that was what they call leveling up for me. Trying to write multiple points of view, trying to write a bigger kind of book, trying to write something that. I mean, all my books are contemporary and timely and fast paced and page turning thrillers, but this was a this is a bigger book, um, and so I can really gauge uh, my writing development by the other woman. I, I love it. You know, won the Mary Higgins Clark Award, and that's astonishing. Um, and she, Mary Higgins Clark asked me how old I was when um, she presented the award to me. When I told her, she says, oh, you look good, girl. So, <laughs> <laughs> Mary Higgins Clark, the, the most elegant of us all. So we really miss her. Yeah. 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 So how did you come to write? I'm going to hold up. The first to lie. How did you decide then, you know, when you when you're in engaged with these other characters in your series to write a standalone? Well, you know, it's such a good question because a standalone and I promise you I'll, I'll get to totally what you're asking. But a standalone I learned is such a different creature. You know, from writing a series, I know Charlotte McNally and her milieu and where she lives and what she does and what her goals are. And I know Jane Ryland and what the rhythm and the music and the architecture of the Jane Ryland books are. But the thing of a series, the key of the series is that the suspense of a series can't come from the mortality of the main character, right? You know, you know, Jane Ryland isn't going to die because she has to come back for book six. So you smart readers have an expectation of what will be the the rhythm of the book, the arc of this book, that there'll be a problem and Jane will solve it to some peril, but not mortal peril because mm -hmm. you've got to come back. But in a standalone, I started thinking about how in a standalone, everything is on the table. Anything could happen. The reader's expectations are not, you know, they're nothing. You, you don't know. Anybody could live. Anybody could die. Anybody could be telling the truth. Anybody could be lying. You know, anybody could be the bad guy. Anybody could seem to be the good guy and turn out to be the bad guy or the other way around. And that's so powerful because as an author in a standalone, I can just pull the rug out from under you. I can just say, watch this. I mean, you, 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 I remember so well reading Murder on the Orient Express when I was a teenager, I think, maybe younger. And I thought, when you remember the ending and you think, oh, my golly, how did Agatha Christie do that? And that's what I'm sort of going for in a standalone is that twists and turns and page turning suspense. Anything goes. Um, and, I, and I just love doing that. So when I had the idea for Trust Me, my very first standalone, I knew that couldn't be a Jane Ryland novel. That had to be a completely different, twisty, turny, gaslighting, psychological, domestic suspense. And that was Trust Me. And I loved that. I loved that concept so much of that here is all I've got for this book um, that I decided to do it again in the murder list and then again um, in the first to lie. And each of the books is a cat and mouse game, you know, but which character is the cat and which character is the mouse? That's great. <laughs> so you, you mentioned Agatha Christie. Are there, what other writers shaped you? And also, are you a rereader of some of those novels that influenced you early on? Um, 
Yeah, you know, besides Agatha Christie, I read all the Golden Age mysteries, Niall Marsh and Josephine Tay and Marjorie Allingham and Dorothy Sayers. You know, those are those are great storytellers. I mean, those are puzzle mysteries that make you think. And I started, I, you know, when you guess something and you're right, you feel so smart. And when you don't guess it, and the and the author does some some wonderful sleight of hand, and you think, ooh, how did they do that? You know, I I really love that. But in other authors, in other genres, you know, I love Edith Wharton, mm-hmm. how she sort of so grasped her contemporary time, and you know that insidious dialogue and the complete subtext and double meaning throughout and such a a look at her culture and I embrace that I also when I worked at Rolling Stone I worked with Hunter Thompson um, a lot and I learned from him to just go for it you know just give it all you got you know there you should just deep dig as deeply as you possibly can into the story and don't be afraid of convention and just kind of go for it and then Tom Wolfe um, bonfire of the vanities. I remember thinking, this is just a tour de force. You know, talk about just letting the stops out. Um, I kind of just learned from that to listen to my own voice, to listen to my characters' voices. You know, also I have to tell you, I when I was in college, I majored in Shakespeare, much to my parents' chagrin. <laughs> they're like, oh, honey, you are not employable. What are you going to do with that kind of a degree? Um, but that storytelling too, you know, think how he, the suspense and the duplicity and the multi layers and the metaphors and the bigger picture stories and the themes as the themes as well as a page turning story. And that's what I'm really going for. I want you to think of your world in a different way after you read my books. I want you to think, ooh, good story. You know, of course, I I couldn't put that down. But I also want you to, you know, in in the first to lie, for instance, I want you to look at your relationship with your doctor in a different way. I want you to look at your relationship with your family in a different way and with your mother in a different way um, and with your friends in a different way and with your and with your own family, the family you may want or the family you had tried to get or the family you have. All those kinds of things, family loyalty. What if you knew a secret about your family that would, if told, would devastate your family, um, but help other people? What would you do? So those kinds of um, ethics, morality, situational questions. You know, somebody said in a novel I read, someone asked an author, why do you write books about crime when there's so much crime in the world already? And this author said, I don't write about crime. I write about justice. And that's Mm. what I do. I write about truth and justice. You know, but if you say that out loud, you're like, oh, I'm not going to read that book. So (laughs) secretly, secretly, that's what I'm writing about, justice and how we get there. And what does it mean to tell the truth? 